Welcome to a tutorial using Pixlot. In this tutorial, you're going to use layers and the brush tool to change an image. Now, this is the image that I've started with, just a flower, and this is the image that I've finished with. To start, I've opened up an image. And it's called Flower. It's a fairly large image. It's uh, 2,800 pixels by 28, so it's very big. It's only at 17% at the moment, you can see down here. And the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate the layer to preserve the original. All right, so I'm going to cut out the flower. So I'm going to use the lasso and as close as possible to the edge of the flower. Just outline it. We'll clean it all up in a minute. Then copy, edit, copy, or use the keyboard shortcuts. Do a new layer. I'm going to name the layers as we do new ones and just call this one transparent flower because that's what it will become. Select that layer and paste in what you just copied. Now if we select the move tool we can see there are two flowers there and if I turn off the background copy and actually unlock the background, turn that one off too, you can see what we're left with. Move that round. So it's that image now and if you turn off those other layers you can work with this a little easier is to get the eraser tool, change the brush, and to start erasing. As close as you can get into that flower. We're using a small brush to get into close to the edges and then changing to a, a larger brush once you've defined the edges. So for now I can go back in and make that bigger, bigger than that. And rub that bit out. So ultimately what you want to end up with is a, a flower that is transparent. So I'll come back when I finish that. So here's the flower that has had its background erased. It's now a transparent layer. And if I turn background layers back on. Select the transparent flower and then with the move tool move the transparent flower directly over its background copy. So what we can do now is change the background and put a different effect on the background whilst leaving the flower in the foreground in focus. With the background copy selected you can change the filter. And you could experiment with other filters, but the filter I've chosen to use is Find Edges. But I could pick a different one, Point to Nice, for example, and change it into small circles. So you can experiment with that. But the filter I've used for this video is Find Edges. Leaves the flower in focus with the background nicely darkened. Now, if I turned off Transparent Flower, you could see. It's finding the edges of the flower. So now we need to put some, some brush effects on there. So a new layer, so make sure you have selected transparent flower, new layer, and let's call this one brush at the bottom of the image, brush bottom. And I want to add some brush strokes to it. So to select the brush, tool and more and I want to add some of the other brushes from the other brush palettes. So in this case I'm going to select some of the vector stalks and add them. And I also want to add from the nature palette some from the flowers. And I'm also going to define my own brush and I'll show you how to do that shortly. So these are 
two of the brush palettes and I'm not going to use all of these but I do want to use a couple of them. I wanted to use this one from the flowers palette and from the bet the stalks there was a couple I wanted to use at three of them like this one a couple of others. Now there are far too many brushes there and you're going to get confused with all of those so what once you've figured out what brushes you're going to use then remove the rest. Click on that one and remove that brush and then keep clicking till I remove all the ones that I'm not going to use. And eventually you end up with a couple of brushes that you want to keep and you can also keep the default brushes. Once you've got the brushes that you want to keep save the set and call them whatever you want to call them with PBR as the extension and I'll show you what I've already done. So I'm going to clear all the brushes and I'm going to load my set of previously saved brushes. So I've called them understanding layers brushes because I don't want to have to keep going through finding them and selecting them. These are the default. It starts with number 31. It's all these. These are the defaults and these are the, the brushes that I've added from the vector stalks and the flowers palettes and this is the brush that I've actually defined from an image which I'll show you how to do in a minute. And so you can keep on. I can reset and that will reset the default brushes. I can clear everything uh, and then I can load my set of previously saved brushes. So I'm going to start with this brush and it's a little bit small so I can make it bigger. Change the diameter so it's a bit bigger. Select the colour. So I'd like a green probably that colour green, with scatter selected, holding left mouse button down, I can just move that up and down and it sort of arranges it in a bit more natural way. Select another brush, 413, different colour, yellow, And again, it's a bit small, so I make the diameter a bit bigger. With scatter turned on, some yellow, actually. Turn scatter off and just want to place those within the area without overdoing it. Just trying to fill up some gaps. And then the third one is the 272 brush in white. Scattered turned off, still a bit too small. That much bigger. Let's put some white. And you can move it down to, to get the tops or the bottoms. And if I wanted to, if it was a bit too bright, could change the opacity or put a filter on that layer. So toggling the, the layer settings would change that to different blend settings. Some of them don't work. Hard light works. But I'm going to leave it at normal so you can experiment with that. Then I've also got uh, a couple more. There was this one, I think it was in pink. That's a little heart. And putting a couple of those on. I'll create a new layer. This one called Brush Top. Come back to the brush and select this brush, green. Have it scatter turned on just a couple. Scatter turned on again. 
and now I want it to, to add uh, like a butterfly. So what you can do in Pixlr is find an image and then define that as a brush. So what I have, found a picture, let's change that brush back, found a picture just by doing a Google search for brushes, um, Photoshop brushes, and then looking at the images of them, making that bigger. Uh, just use the navigator because we're at 19 percent there so use the navigator to make it a bit bigger because what you can do is define an image as a brush so with the lasso tool just outline the picture so this is the one i want to use as a butterfly and then edit define brush or control k now when I go into the brush palette, there is a butterfly. Now I've done this before and I saved it in my set of brushes. So I could remove that one because I already have it. So I can close that image now, don't need to save it, and come back to this. And with that selected, let's do a green, a very bright green. And you can change the um, diameter and see how big it is at the moment and the spacing and just put a butterfly. So last layer, let's put some text on. Text. And just in some whites. And picking whatever font and size you want. And just putting some text in. I'm just going to call it fun with layers. And that's at size 30. You know, I can go to its maximum size and it still doesn't look too big. The problem is that the image is at 70%. So really what we need to do is resize this image first before we put some text on. So I'm going to re remove that layer and that layer. And because I'm fairly happy with this, I'm going to merge all these layers into one. So that's called flattening the image. Flatten the image. So we're back with one layer. And now resize it. And at the moment it's at 28 35 pixels by 2835, far too big. So go to image size, take off constrained proportions and save it at 640 by 480. It's still at 70%, so I can take that up to 100%. And just make it its full dimensions. And now we can add some text. So a new layer. Call that text. Make it white. Make it 50. And then change the, the font. You can just run it down the each one till you find one that you like. That'll do. And uh, style, make it bold. Move tool can move it around. If you wanted to, you could put some styles on. So put some shadows, like a drop shadow. Perhaps yellow. And then we save that as a final image. File, save as a JPEG, 100%. Then have a look at it, and there you have it.
and change to a simple flower using filters, brushes and layers. So that's all for this video.